and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Amazing. Wow. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. At a human level, there is something not correct about this statement, this verse. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. What is not correct at a human level? How can you judge if you haven't made war first? See, he put judgment before war here. When you want to judge a country, you need to go into war with that country and overcome that country in order to be able to judge that country. True? America, once upon a time, wanted to judge Iraq. To this George Bush Jr., you naughty boy. With all love and respect, you lied through your teeth. But anyway, when America wanted to judge Iraq for having so-called weapons of mass destruction, which was anthrax was given by America to Iraq in the 80s, by the way. The Americans provided Iraq with anthrax. It's a very poisonous substance, a little powder in the air it can kill a lot of people very poisonous when america wanted to judge iraq what did they do they waged a war against iraq first then they judged the president and the entire nation true now why we need to engage in a war first before we make a judgment because as human beings we cannot guarantee the war we are about to enter, whether we are going to be victorious, triumphant, or we're going to lose the war. We can't guarantee it. It could go either way. But when it comes to God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, He judges, then He makes war. Why? Because before God engages in any war, He's already won the war. With God, everything is victory. No one can overcome God. That's why he makes the judgment, then he makes war. Because he's already won the battle. When the Lord Jesus came to enter Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday. Yes, some of us celebrated it, some of us are about to celebrate it this year. When he came to enter Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, what did the Lord Jesus request and ask for? A donkey. The Lord Jesus sat on a mule. You know why? Because my beloveds, the Israelite people lived in Egypt uh, in slavery for 400 years. They learned so many customs of the Egyptians. The donkey, my beloveds, Pharaoh, when he came to engage into a battle, he would sit on a horse. When Pharaoh won that battle, he would sit on a donkey. So when the people of his time saw Pharaoh sitting on a donkey, they knew and understood that the Egyptians, the Pharaohs, have won the battle. So sitting on a donkey, a king sitting on a donkey, meaning that the war is won. The Lord Jesus was about to enter Jerusalem. What was going to happen there? It was the last week, what we call the Passion Week. He was entering to engage himself in a battle against Satan and embrace the cross. Before entering the battle, he said on a donkey, the king of all kings. He was saying to all of us, when I come to enter a battle, the outcome is already determined. I am victorious because no one can overcome Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's why when it comes to God, he judges first, then he enters and makes war. You with me? If you believe in this God, 
that nothing stands in his way that nothing shakes him nothing breaks him and he is always victorious and triumphant why are you so worried why why are you so troubled why are you so concerned why are you so afraid if you believe this God is always in control and he always wins before creating anything and everything God judges already God judges he is victorious and the one who judge the one who judges is the one who is in control the one who is in charge the one who rules who reigns and orders things to happen God does not need to get engaged in a battle to find out if he's gonna win or not because it's already predetermined God always wins nothing stands in his way trust in this God his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth and let all your worries all your problems let him handle it for you let him handle it for you verse 12 his eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns his eyes were like a flame of fire If I bring any human being who have a perfect vision, what is it, 20? Hmm? 2020. But we are in 2024. <laughs> if I bring any human being who has a perfect vision, 2020, and they see little tiny writings from a very far distance, with this perfect vision, I bring them and I put them in a totally dark room. Their vision will be zero out of zero. All that perfect vision becomes absolutely blindness when I put them in that dark room. Why? Because the eye needs the light in order to see. And without the light, no matter what kind of a vision you have, Without the light, we are totally blind. We see nothing. The Lord's eyes, from them, flame of fire comes. What is the flame? Light, meaning that He is the light itself. From Him comes the light. Internally, the light comes from Him, not externally, because He is the creator of light. He is the one who lives in the light and he is the one who gives that light. I am the light of the world. He who walks with me shall never walk in darkness. Meaning his eyes see the unseeable. His eyes penetrate places where it is beyond any other eye to see. In other words, everything is vividly clear in the eyes of the Lord Jesus nothing is hidden from him you can run but you cannot hide from the eyes of the Lord so you may go into that dark little alley at midnight where it's extremely dark and you can do whatever in that dark alley saying to yourself nobody sees me sorry the Lord sees you you can't hide you can do all the plots behind closed doors. You can do all the plannings behind closed doors, underground bunkers, <laughs> secret societies. Sorry, the Lord's eyes see everything visible and invisible. Nothing is obscure to the Lord. Everything is within his vision because His eyes were like a flame of fire. Wow. There is so much to be said in these verses. I don't have the time. 
His eyes were like a flame of fire.